Hello everyone, uh, my name is Lori and I'm a former Xinxiangji congregation member. I was in Xinxiangji for about seven years in total and I wanted to share with you my story of why I joined, um, the experiences that I had as well as the reasons why I left. Um, please note that I will not share a lot of detail. If you have any questions, please free, feel free to comment on the video or you can send me an email at xinxiangjiskeptic at gmail.com if you'd like. Um, and I'll just stick to the very basics. Uh, I think otherwise the, the video will be really long. So like I said, I was in Chichanji for about seven years and during that time I, I had the duty of BB teacher. I was a supervisor, I was a head supervisor, I was a center worker, I was an instructor, uh, and I was a head instructor as well for a couple of years before I left. I joined Chinchanji because I was honestly just looking for purpose in my life. I was looking for truth and understanding of the Bible. Um, that's ultimately what I was looking for at that time in my life. Um, I was sincerely convinced that it's the truth. I, I really was looking for answers. Um, and I thought that the way they explained things made a lot of sense to me and everything felt very logical or appeared very logical. And um, yeah, so me and my mother and my sister and my best friend from before Shinchonji, um, we all attended the center course together. We passed over together, we joined the church together, we eventually became all leaders together as well. Um, three of, of us, me and my sister and, and my best friend, we left and we're very close at the moment. Um, but either way, to get back to the story, um, when we passed over and, and before Passover, we did go through some doubts here or there. I always asked a lot of questions. I made sure that I focus on, you know, what the Bible says instead of what I feel because I would be freaked out by certain things, but I would tell myself, this is just feelings. Um, I still agree that, you know, it was ultimately just feelings that have not necessarily had anything to do with the truth. Um, and I quit my job while I was in introduction course. I became a full-time worker. While I was intermediate, I started teaching BB. After I finished the center course, a couple of weeks had gone by, I started being sent to various regions to start new churches, um, to, also to other countries, um, start new churches or to grow the regions, smaller regions that were struggling or something like that. I eventually came back to Cape Town and I was made a leader. Uh, I became a supervisor, then head supervisor, and then I eventually became an instructor and then head instructor and I also you know, became the leader of a country, of a church in Southern Africa, specifically Namibia. Um, so some of the experiences that I had, um, these things made me confused, but I wouldn't necessarily say I doubted God or Shinchonji or the Bible or Mani Li because of this, but they were just things that made me feel really uncomfortable, specifically what I experienced as a leader. Some of the things were like instructing people to get an abortion. Um, which I find to be immoral uh, and basically telling them that if they don't get an abortion they'll be kicked out of the church and this was specifically in the context of when they would get pregnant with the child of someone outside of the church and they can't evangelize that person so they're given an ultimatum that you either get an abortion or you will be kicked out of the church and you know, ultimately you go to hell so it's a, it's, a, it's a fear tactic to some extent. Of course, this is their doctrine. I understand, you know, where it's coming from. And I've got a problem with it morally. Um, and this was something that I did twice. Um, I felt very uncomfortable with it. I eventually stopped doing it. I refused to do it. Um, and I think the difficult part as well is that some of the people that gave me this instruction later denied that they gave the instruction as if it was just something I did. I thought that was very dishonest. There's also many times that you'll get feedback from leaders that goes against what higher leaders are saying. Then later, those lower leaders that would instruct you would just deny that they told you that. There would also be cases where someone will tell you something and then you do it and then they rebuke you for doing it. And then later, they'll make you admit that they never told you to do it. Um, so stuff like that is just, you know, just classic gaslighting. It's really just forms of emotional manipulation. Um, and other things like in some of the churches, at least that I was involved in, interracial marriage wasn't allowed and there wasn't really any reasons given. The only one reason that I ever received was there was instruction given that Mani Lee said that Koreans can't get married to non-Koreans because non-Koreans don't have the same level of faith. It'll damage their faith. Um, of course, I, I 
this doesn't really make much sense to me. I don't think that Koreans necessarily always have stronger faith in a sense than foreigner people, but you know, that's what was told. This didn't really affect me that much because I was never interested romantically in a Korean. But of course it did affect me because I was, uh, I had romantic feelings towards someone that wasn't the same race as me and I wasn't allowed to uh, engage in a relationship or perhaps get married to her simply because of her race and I had a problem with this because this is obvious racism um, and th there were some of these things that were spoken that was just clear racism that um, I of course I I'm, I'm feel very uncomfortable with it. Um, these are not things that most people over instruction know. There's also things like, you know, the 75 test questions that were set up, the revelation questions, and of course later 30 was added to make it 105. But there was a lot of cheating done, even though the General Assembly and the Mani Lee said that there shouldn't be any cheating on the test, people should not be allowed to rewrite. There was instruction given within Philip Tribe for some regions to rewrite. There was even cases where some of the people that got bad marks after rewriting those people's scores were never submitted. Um, so that the tribe's average can be higher. And the justification that was given is that those people won't be uh, kingdom of priests either way, so it won't make a difference. Of course, this is not things that will be told to members. Um, so these are things that, of course, you know, is rather uncomfortable. Then there's other things like leaders very high up in the structure seriously doubting belief in God, belief in the Bible, belief in Mani Li. And these things are sometimes just swept under the rug. And sometimes, even though you get some people high up in structure, they'll stop believing. They will literally won't even believe in the, the promised pastor or the promised kingdom or something like that anymore. And then they'll simply stay in their duty. They'll just keep the people there. There's cases where there's church head. There was a church head once that he was literally an atheist and he was a church head. And tribe was fine with it. How, like, how do you do that? And then people like there was a, 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 one of the leaders that he was a group leader as someone that wasn't really even convinced of God's existence. And he was told that he needs to keep working and behaving as if he believes and eventually he'll become convinced. Now, this is obviously a pathway to self-deception. If you simply repeat, repeat, repeat until you become convinced, you're indoctrinating yourself. This is silly. So things like this, there's also a lot of leaders that have mental health problems and may, uh, issue of, 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 of mental health problems, things like this. Not all of them, of course, but there's so much about the higher leaders. Like, you know, I had a lot of anger towards some of them before I'd left. But as I also, you know, grow a bit more mature in my thinking and as I've left SJ for a longer time and I'm a bit more calm, I also realize a lot of them seriously have problems and they're also just struggling and, and the SJ is a way in which they can manifest in a way that they feel their problems are solved. Uh, there's a lot of leaders that you know they seem rather power hungry or they misuse their power and if you actually get to know them on a personal level you'll also realize that a lot of them had issues with like parents that treated them badly and they've never felt in control so they're addicted to the idea of being in control they never had it as children so those people do find you know psychological benefits for themselves but unfortunately in a very selfish way so once again None of these things are the reason why I left. Um, I can tell you that there is some things doctrine-wise that sound a bit dodgy. Um, like specifically when I did instructors training, there was the one time we were, the Mani Lee's testimony of Revelation 4 was explained where it was, we were basically told that when he went up to the spiritual realm in Revelation 4, he saw a lot of stuff and he was still confused about what the four living creatures are. And then later he walked into a Buddhist temple and in some way he made sense that it's the, you know, it's the four archangels. So there's some of the stuff that he didn't understand and he figured it out over time. Now this is not the way that we initially taught in center. We taught in center that when he went up to the spiritual realm, he saw the reality of God's throne. He received revelation about what it means and about how it will be fulfilled on the earth. And he has to build the kingdom according to it. So we're like the prophet John basically sees frigative things symbolically in a vision where the new John, he sees the reality of those things. He doesn't see four living creatures with four heads and many eyes. He sees four archangels that has four different duties and that have, you know, many angels surrounding them that are under their command. This is the way that we taught, but 
when you listen to some of his testimonies, specifically the earlier ones, it's not what we teach. It's just not the same. So a lot of the stuff kind of became refined over time. And also some of the dates it was just very confusing, specifically regarding fulfillment. And when things become confusing, you ask questions, they'll just say, it's not important. And, you know, fair enough, it's, it's not a problem. I, I don't have a problem with that that much because there isn't that many dates in the Bible. It's one of the problems I have with prophecy, the vagueness of language. But either way, my reason uh, why I left is there was a former church head of South Africa that for a while the th he did education for the theology department where we did uh, unbelievers education, where we would look at certain scientific videos trying to explain like the teleology behind the universe, like the design behind the universe, the cause of existence, looking at the Big Bang and how everything points to God and things like that. Um, and also like certain archaeological things connected with the Bible. And I found this, of course, very interesting. And then it was suggested to some of the regions, uh, well, some of the leaders of the region, some of the head instructors, to do some research into this and also to develop some basic unbelievers material. So we know how to consult people that have unbelievers tendencies in the church and in center, as well as if we perhaps eventually have to evangelize unbelievers. Now, I found this very interesting. And one of the things that I had heard so many times people say about ACJ was that they don't know how to critically think. And I thought, but we do. We discern everything according to the Bible. You know, we take things very seriously. We discuss everything thoroughly. I thought, you know, we think about things deeply. But at the same time, I wanted to make sure that I have a good understanding of it. So I found the Foundation for Critical Thinking in Los Angeles in America. And I, I bought many of their books. I read their books on critical thinking and logic, logical fallacies cognitive biases, ethics, media propaganda, things like that. Overall, it made me a much more critical thinker. I also, over time, I looked at neuroscience to try to find evidence for a soul. Um, I looked at the different arguments for God's existence and the Bible. Um, I looked at things like the cosmological argument, the teleological argument, the moral argument, the ontological argument, arguments about prophecy and fulfillment. Uh, about the Bible being scientifically accurate, you know, things like that. Um, I, I looked at them. I also looked at rebuttals of them or criticisms of them because one of the things you learn in critical thinking is to first look at different perspectives before you reach a conclusion. And that also one of the most common biases that we have is called the confirmation bias, is that we are constantly seeking and focusing on information that ultimately confirms our beliefs and we avoid and stay away from information that opposes our beliefs. This is actually very, very difficult to do. Um, so I also studied science. I studied some cosmology and psychology and biology. Um, I studied about Big Bang and evolution. I looked at various, I looked at argue, uh, uh, debates between theists and atheists. I look at scientists debating diff people from different religions. I looked at various different perspectives and even though my kind of motive, my reason for doing these things was to get unbelievers to become believers and to become members of Shinchanji, in the process, I myself stopped believing. Um, I stopped believing in the Christian God. I stopped believing in the Bible. Um, and of course, because of that, I of course did not believe in Shinchanji anymore. But as time went by as well, I also picked up certain problems with SEJ's doctrine, like, for example, Revelation 7 doctrine clearly changed. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how any honest human being cannot pick that up. There is a clear, clear change in regards to the way that we used to teach it, where there were these different stages and how the Great Tribulation would come upon the world outside of SEJ. And then later they teach it comes upon SEJ first. This is not what we taught. This is completely the opposite of what we taught. And then people try to just play around with language as if that's not really what was meant. It was clearly meant that. If after this doesn't literally mean something following another thing, I don't know what language means. I don't understand it. People are very dishonest in SEJ. They play, play around a lot with language. It's also one of the reasons why I studied linguistics. I did a course on linguistics, which is the study of language. When you understand the way that these things work, it actually becomes sad how indoctrinated SCJ people are. And I also felt to some extent guilty because I had built this church um, 
I had indoctrinated people and I didn't know how to help them to get out. Um, and they don't have to get out. I mean, ultimately, each person can live their life the way they want to. But I think that in, you know, some people would argue, oh, you know, in ACJ, we have the freedom to think for ourselves. I don't think that they do. But even if they did, they don't know how to think for themselves to the extent that they can analyze and evaluate claims. They don't know how to do that. You can have a conversation with them about it. You'll realize they don't. If you understand how critical thinking works, they don't know how to critically think. And this is very obvious if you understand what it is. I thought they did. And my reason is because I didn't actually understand critical thinking. I now do. And I can tell you with a high degree of confidence, they don't know how to critically think. They don't understand science. And of course, what I'll do on this channel is I will use science and critical thinking to evaluate their claims. And I also teach you on how to think more critically about the things that they're saying. There's a lot of times, like for example, this happened with me as well. When, when you leave, they'll say things like, you ask them to demonstrate the truthfulness of their claims. And then they just say silly things and you ask questions and then they can't really answer. And then they'll respond by saying, but can you, can you demonstrate or can you prove 100% that we're false? They shift the burden of proof and then people don't even understand how the burden of proof works. And when, they, when you're asked that by leaders, you're like, I, I don't know. And then you're not sure if you should go. Then you get these people, as they currently are many people in SEJ that no longer believe, but they just stay there because they're afraid. There's people in SEJ that are currently there. But because they're married to someone else, they're afraid they're going to lose a family member. They're afraid they're going to lose their wife or their husband or something like that. They're afraid they're going to lose their children. They're afraid they're going to lose the people that they love. And that's why they stay. And that's terrible to have to live in, in such a way. There's people that are literally to a point where so, they're so doubtful. They're basically just waiting for money lead to die so that they can leave them. Um, and this is also, of course, terrible. Not that I would wish anyone to die. I don't think anyone just, you know, I wouldn't be happy if, if he dies in that way. Shame. Um, but yeah, I, I left because I love truth. I love science, critical thinking, and I care about human well-being. And these are the reasons why I left ultimately. And over time, I'll put out videos where I'll explain the detail of the conclusions that I've reached. And I'll also give you, I'll, I'll share with you information that can help you to just think about things from a different perspective. So that's pretty much my story. Uh, over time, I'll also share with you how my life has been after I left SEJ. My life has been great. The first couple of months was really, really difficult, but I can tell you it gets so much better and that there's so many opportunities in this life. There's so many things to do. And that even if one doesn't specifically believe in the things of SEJ or even religious things, you can still live an absolutely great life. And I'll share with you some perspectives on that. And there's also a lot of other people that also will share their testimony on this channel. So this channel is not just a channel that belongs to me. It will also be something where a lot of other former members and leaders that have been in SEJ a long time will also share their experiences and their conclusions that will be different than mine, but we'll share different ideas and you can ultimately discern for yourself. Thank you very much for listening.